Yo, what's up guys, my name is Mr. Freeze 2244 and welcome to the Clichés Elusive Target Arcade Contract. So for this Elusive Target Arcade Contract, the complication for this is we have a restricted loadout, so we have nothing in our inventory and we have to start from the default location and there's no way of adding or bringing in any kind of like disguises or, or any kind of equipment. For level one, level 1 we have a new Elusive Target to Hitman 3 and that's called the Pharmacist from Hitman 1, so here is the briefing. Good evening, 47. Your target is Nila Torvik, brilliant pharmaceutical scientist and CEO of Torvik Research. Her company is a major provider of low-cost generic drugs to the developing world. However, this philanthropic project is cover for large-scale human tests in the third world. She will be attending the Iago auction in Paris as a personally invited guest of Dahlia Margolis, it is possible that she has been warned of a potential assassination attempt, so you should expect her to be highly suspicious. The clock is ticking, 47. Good luck. Good evening, 47. Like I said, we have no way of, of bringing in any equipment at all, so we've just come in with, a, with nothing. And this is probably one of the worst looser targets to have no equipment with, because we are really restricted from what we can actually do. So she will start uh, near where all the cars are parked from the right of the start location. So she's going to be having an entourage of two bodyguards following her around. So before I get into the details of it, I'm just going to come into this room over here, grab that wrench, turn on this vacuum cleaner and turn it off. We're distracting the security guard outside. We need his pistol. So that's the only reason why we're doing this. So we're going to knock him out and then drag his body and put him in the locker and grab his pistol. But yeah, she has two bodyguards following her around everywhere, and she is gonna head straight upstairs to talk to you to talk to Dahlia Magolis. And between here and there, there's just nothing that presents itself in terms of opportunities with no equipment. So there's not really much else you can do apart from basically heading to where that meeting is and then basically setting her up in there, that room there. So let's head there right now. Now outside here, there's going to be an enforcer, just be wary of where he is, he might be in a different location for you, but just be, just avoid him. We don't have an invitation to go upstairs, so what we're going to do is go around the back end side and climb up the pipe. It's faster anyway, more direct. So take this pipe all the way up. Once we're up here, we can just climb into the party. There we go. We're in. Next, we're going to get ourselves a disguise. So we're going to get this uh, auction staff member disguise here. So we're going to come into this attic, chuck a wrench on the floor, pick the wrench back up, and wait for the auction staff member to come back in. Once he does, we're just going to go in and knock him out. And then we're going to hide his body in a crate. The crate is just over here in the in the attic. You don't have to hide the body, but you know, we've got time to kill, so you might as well. Something to do. But once we've dumped the body here, we're just gonna grab the, uh, the disguise off him. And once you've done that, we have everything we need now. So we're gonna head to the room where Dahlia meets up with Nina. And uh, yeah. It's just, an, it's just one of them, because we have no equipment with us, it really limits us to what we can actually do with the elusive target itself. Because we're going to take her out in here, but there's just there's just nothing else we can potentially do. She has, uh, there's a bodyguard in this room just outside here, this woman wanders in every now and then. She has an entourage of two bodyguards following her around. She follow, they follow so closely as well, so we can't do any like chandelier kill other than the one we're about to do. Uh, she, I mean, they're, they're following so close. This chandelier tour in front of us right now, she doesn't even pass underneath it, so we can't do that either. It just really limits us from what we can do without our equipment. Even with equipment, it's not a uh, very good elusive target overall. If you had equipment, you could do this elusive target, and I'm not even joking, in about 10 seconds. But uh, the fact that we have zero equipment, it's, it's a very poor... Uh, introduction to this elusive target for the very first time for Hitman 3 players. 
because for a lot of people this will be their first time ever ever, ever attempting this elusive target and it's a poor introduction of it in my opinion because we don't have any goodies to play with so Dahlia is going to come out momentarily to talk to her and she's going to lead us into her office So Dali's not going to hang around, she's going to actually just leave and go back to her normal routine. And then Nina Torvik is just going to hang around here and she's going to be walking in random like, spaces. She'll have a sit down in the chair just to our right. She'll stand underneath the chandelier on her phone. She'll hang around by the window or she'll come outside and lean over the ledge. And you may say that uh, leaning over the ledge is an opportunity. It really isn't. That You'd have to knock out all the guards in the area and it's just not. It's just not a really a, a good, efficient way of doing anything, really. We can't even trigger the the chandelier in the room, so we have to we have to shoot it. Unfortunately, the good thing about this, though, this window, she can't see through it, so I can point the gun at her head right through the window. She won't even know. But the good thing about this location here, because we're going to use this with window to our advantage. Uh, we're just going to wait for her to stand underneath the chandelier. We have to make sure our timing is right. But she does move from location to location. So you got to make sure this timing is, is spot on. Like I said, she either leans out over this ledge right here. Which is not an option. Because there's two guards there. If those, well, if those guards weren't there, we could just throw her over the ledge. But uh, we're not going to do that. One of the things where you just got to be patient for this particular loser target. So now she's finally in place for us. We're going to wait for her to go on the phone here, right here. This is your opportunity to shoot the chandelier. Well done. And then we can exit. Just make sure you follow where I'm going because if you go past through that room again, you're going to get shot. Uh, because that gunshot would have been heard, but as long as you follow exactly where I'm going, you'll have no problem exiting the mission. Now, you can take pretty much any exit you'd like. If you take the one with the helicopter, which I'm about to go to, um, it is a trespassing zone around the helicopter, and you need to be wary of the bodyguards that are circling around the helicopter as well. Just keep that in mind. They might, they might be in a different location to you than they are for me. But uh, if the coast is clear, go ahead and set a helicopter exit if you'd like. But yeah, that's that's level one. It's a very, very long level one. And unfortunately, uh, I couldn't see another opportunity that presented itself uh, of what we could do. Other than forcing the situation and probably trying to knock out the guards or something. But I don't think that's a safe route of going about doing it. Because this is ultimately very easy. It's just a long wait. But yeah, that's level one, the pharmacist. This is level two, the, the chameleon. So here is the intro for that. Good afternoon, 47. Your target is Richard M. Foreman, a skilled infiltrator believed to be working with the militia on an unknown operation on US soil. The target is a highly skilled actor, and our files link him with a successful impersonation of billionaire Charles Vanderblatt, where he siphoned hundreds of millions out of the Vanderblatt accounts over the course of three weeks. The contract has two objectives, identifying and eliminating the target in an apparently accidental death such as a fall or drowning. Secondly, uncover files or data about the operation being planned. The clock is ticking, 47. Good luck. Good morning, 47. And here is the Welcome communion. So again, we have no option of uh, a different start location, no option of bringing equipment in. But uh, from the very start, make sure you do grab that coin from the floor. We're going to need this because we don't have any other equipment. So we're going to turn off this generator and turn it back on. And we're going to press against these pallets right here. 
then wait for the guard to come around to investigate and then we're going to knock him out and take his disguise. Last time we did the chameleon I think we only was only allowed one disguise change so overall it was a lot harder then than doing it this this way because there is uh, a coin right there though There's, a coin is all we need really and the fact we get to utilize uh, disguises for this this time we can uh, we can do this relatively uh, straightforward so what we got to do now is uh, head towards uh, another disguise so another disguise is going to be where all the all the trailers are but you have no pretty much no import enforcers between here and there So, go in the back of this trailer of this truck. I'm gonna grab that crowbar as well on the crate. And we're gonna take this disguise. Now we can enter the house. Just uh, avoid the camera. It's just above the door. As we go up the stairs, just be careful that enforcer right there. He's the only enforcer upstairs. Well, apart from the hacker, of course. Then we're going to distract the hackers one by one over to this location. So we're just going to throw the crowbar on the floor or the coin. Make sure they're back are to you before knocking them out. Once you've knocked him out, we're going to drag his body into the corner. Then we're going to do the same thing with this hacker. This time we're going to distract him in the hallway because we don't want him to spot the body. So let's throw the coin right there. Get behind him. Knock him out. Do the same thing with this guy, just drag him in the corner. And we're also going to knock out the guard as well. So again, same thing. Because he's an enforcer though, we have to make sure that uh, we get out of the way after we've thrown that coin. But the target's going to walk off momentarily when he realises he's not got anyone around him. Going to drag his body around the corner. Grab the stuff on the floor. And then we're going to push him off the ledge. So that's an accident kill for the target. Next we just need to retrieve the files, which is just going to be on this laptop. And there we go, that's two that's both objectives complete. So now we need to head to an exit. Just be just try and avoid this camera right there. Because if you get spotted by it, then it's going to spoil your silent assassin written. We need to head to an exit. I was going to go this way, but I realised there's, there's cameras that way as well. So we just have to make sure we go around the back on the uh, the eastern side. Because the uh, the one to the south exit is going to have a camera facing right at the exit. And we don't have anything to take out the cameras. So what we're going to do is just take a safe route over here. Pass through this unlocked gate and then come through here. Exit mission. Done. So that's how you get a Sant Assassin for level 2 without equipment for the Chameleon. And I don't really like knocking out uh, multiple people throughout the mission as well. It's a bit messy, but it just makes things a lot easier. Level 3 we have the Deceivers, and this is the easiest out of all three levels, but here is the intro. Welcome to Sapienza 47. We have two targets for you. Congressman Anthony L. Trout, a veteran of the invasion of Grenada, and Richard J. McGee. Though at first glance these two might not seem connected, they have a long-standing collaboration manipulating Trout's political opposition. Trout sends McGee after his weak but potentially dangerous adversaries and lets McGee manipulate and ultimately break them. Trout and McGee are in Sapienza on an arcane meet and greet with European moneymen and power brokers ahead of a possible presidential bid in 2024. 
We know that Trout is staying at the Via Caruso in the town square, but McGee's business is much more clandestine, and we don't have a location for where he will be. All we know is that he is to meet a Keith Keeble, a rich young man and possibly their next victim. Time to show them the consequences of political manipulation. Good luck, 47. 47. Now, we don't really need equipment for this. Uh, we have coins conveniently placed on the table for us, so we're going to grab those anyway, so might as well. So grab all three of the coins here on the table. We're going to bump into the target to interrupt his conversation to basically speed him up of his routine. So we just bump into him once and then we can run away. Next step is to get into our safe house because we need to use our safe house to get through the back onto the roof tops because we're going to infiltrate the mansion area. We're also going to grab ourselves a disguise along the way. So jump up here on this ledge and grab this uh, kitchen assistant disguise. This will help us pass through the area without any uh, any trouble. Just drop down here. Pass through the kitchen. Before you exit the mission, make sure you do grab the rat poison. That's on the, that's on the counter to the right. And on the left side of the area, there's going to be another door into the uh, basement area. So we can take the stairs down and put the housekeeper disguise on. This is going to allow us to move freely in the wine cellar. Next, we're going to coin this guy into this room just to get him to move out of the way because we need to poison this glass of wine. So once we poison that with rat poison, that is that set up. So from here... We're going to go all the way up to uh, Richard McGee and take him out. He's going to be our first target. So come on out here. Circle away around the back of the ice cream shop. This is, a, this is quite a decent disguise for this map as well. Pretty under underappreciated how good this disguise actually is. In terms of you know less enforcers and stuff from here at this point we're just going to climb this pipe all the way to the top and then we're going to enter this bathroom area here next thing we need to do is take out a coin and place it just as close to the uh, toilet as close as we can next we're going to open the door and make sure that richard sees us but uh, watch the suspicion meter and just before it reaches maximum uh, break the line of sight just by closing the door or just moving away. That way he'll come over to investigate what he's potentially saw. And if you let it fill up completely, he'll spot you and it will spoil your sight of assassin rating. But the idea is just to get him to come into the bathroom. So don't make, make sure that suspicion meter isn't fully, you know, otherwise you'll get spotted. But the idea is he comes into the bathroom, he sees the coin on the floor and then we can drown him. Yeah, so even if anyone comes into this room and sees the body, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a accident kill, so it's a silent assassin score retained anyway. Now we are going, we are going to back to that wine cellar where we poisoned that glass of uh, wine, and from then on out, we just pretty much have to wait for Anthony Trout to come down to the basement. Uh, it can take a random amount of time. I'm gonna skip to when he actually does though to save the waiting on the video but you have to make sure you get frisked here as well Sorry, sir. so Just I hope you didn't pick up any weapons along the way Thank you. Please we're going to pass back through the fountain you can go around the side if you want to but I still think this is quicker more direct but yeah Anthony Trout's not here, so you can use your instinct if you'd like and look up and see where he is. He'll be the guy in the hat. Uh, there he is. Yep, there he is up there. So he's 
Obviously upstairs talking to that uh, staff member there. He's walking around doing like a tour of the house. Eventually he'll tell him to come down to the wine cellar and in introduce him to all this wine. So we're going to skip to that point when he actually does come down. As I said, it can take a while, but eventually he does come up to this glass of wine and takes a sample of it. Because we poisoned it with rat poison, he's going to head to the bathroom to puke up. And that is where we're going to take our opportunity of drowning him as well. So we'll be having to drown both targets for this one. So this is uh, a mission really, you don't really need, need that much equipment. If you had lethal poison, you could do a lot this, this uh, a lot quicker for, for him. But at the end of the day... We don't have any equipment for this mission, so. But once we're drowned in here. We're done. Mission completed. So all we're gonna do now is head to an exit. Usually I'll take the, the car as the exit just out here, but for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason on this particular elusive target, we removed the car exit for this one. It might have something to do with the glitch that happened in season one where there was a guy in a yellow shirt was standing in the middle of the road taking pictures and if you exited and the car knocked him over it would spoil your sinus assassination and you'll get a non-target kill. So I think while they fixed it maybe they removed the exit for that reason? I don't know, I can't remember. But either way, we're going to take the exit over here. I'm going to skip it because there's no point me showing this. There we go, we have our Silent Assassin for level 3. The Elusive Target Arcade Contract, what's it called now? The Clichés. Wish there was a story behind all these uh, weird words for these Elusive Target Arcade Contracts. They're not really making much sense. There we go. That's going to wrap up today's video. So thank you very much for watching. Feel free to drop a like on this video if it helped you out. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And a big shout out to all my Psycho Assassin members. I really do appreciate you all. Bedry, Wondering When to Be, Constantine Mueller, Mark Davis and Paul at home for becoming top tier Psycho Assassin members. If you want your name read out in the, in the credits, be sure to become a Psycho Assassin member by clicking the join button below or the, or the link in the description for all the details. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.